Hello, everyone. Welcome to another financial analysis video with myself, Moeed Amin, and my colleague, Ted Wayman. Uh, the goal of this show is not to give you uh, investment advice, although you might want to use the information to do so. That is in your discretion. The goal of this show, to, to remind everyone, is to help people become more knowledgeable and to, in terms of financial analysis, finance, reading financial statements, um, to inform them whether you are thinking about investing in the company, whether you're thinking about doing business with this company, or even if you're taking an interview with them, uh, our goal is to actually teach you how to read financial statements and how to become more financially savvy. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you like those videos. So today we're going to be looking at a Chinese company. So first time for this show, but definitely not first time for Ted and I to look at a Chinese company, of course. Uh, and today we're going to look at Tencent. Uh, and it's a, it's a big one that we're looking at today. So Tencent is a, um, a tech and entertainment business. It's one of the largest companies in the world. Um, it's actually the largest, largest video gaming company in the world. Um, and you will see, we, we did an analysis of a company in the past, Disney, uh, and, and we showed how they have a stake in over 200 companies. Well, get this, Tencent has a stake in over 600 companies. So just to give you that kind of size and the companies that are involved in cloud computing, entertainment, gaming, as I said, fintech, technology, and a whole host of others. Um, and just to give you another idea of the size of this company, they have eight, as of, as of this, uh, this recording in March, 2022, they have 86,000 employees. So quite a sizable business. And we're gonna go into the financials about this company in a moment. But before we do so, just to give you an idea on the share price. So uh, they are IPO, well, they are actually listed on both the, in, in both the US stock exchange and the Chinese stock exchange, specifically the Hong Kong stock exchange. So the IPO in 2004. Now, if you'd invested back then, you'd be sitting on a handsome profit indeed, a profit of 47,000%. Now, if you'd invested five years ago, you'd be sitting on a, a profit of 73%. And if you invested a year ago, because of everything that's been going on in the market, you'll be sitting on a loss of 43%. But we're going to dive into a bit more around the details behind that in relation to what we're looking at the backward looking financial statements. So remember, this is all retrospective. We're not looking at future statements for here because we're helping you um, understand how to read those statements. So you can look at those future statements, those quarterly statements on your own with, a, with our help on how to analyze that. So um, let's get to it and, and share what we found about this company and some information there. So Ted, uh, take it away. O although one thing to note, actually I forgot, uh, this came as a request from a couple of our viewers, right? So, uh, you know, over 95% of our videos and the companies we analyze actually come from requests from you, the viewers. So Dominic and others, thank you for your request. And don't forget, if you want us to analyze a company that you're really interested in, do leave a note in the comment section and we will get to it. We get a flood of them, but we will do our best to get to yours as soon as possible. So Ted, let's take it away and share with our viewers what we found about uh, this interesting company. Um, hi, Moe. Yes, thank you very much indeed. So um, good to see you and good to see all of uh, our um, viewers. Uh, apologies if you uh, think we've been away for a little bit a while. We've been incredibly busy, but uh, we're back um, with a vengeance. So here is Tencent, um, uh, lib incorporated actually in the Cayman Islands. Um, and uh, this is their annual report. Um, it's uh, available on their website, uh, relatively straightforward. Um, it's interesting enough, the annual report is for 2020. Um, so they haven't released their 2021 figures yet. Um, so we're still in 2020. There is a half year for 2021. And we'll have a quick look at that um, a little bit later on at the end of this uh, this video. Um, but what we're going to do is look at the kind of the, the, the audited numbers for 2020 um, uh, and get a feel for what is going on in this company. OK, so here we go. We are dealing in uh, um, basically in, in Yuan, in RMB, uh, and uh, we are in millions. So we're talking about billions. So 264,000 million is obviously 264 billion. So turnover is 482 billion. 
Okay, so there's a turnover, 482 billion, uh, and that is a significant, a 20% increase, a 28%, sorry, increase on the prior year. Okay, so this company is growing and growing rapidly. Um, cost of revenues uh, uh, here, so that's the cost of the kind of, you know, the, 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 the games, et cetera, et cetera, um, uh, and a very, very healthy um, 40 uh, 44, 46% gross margin. So basically every time they bill a dollar, it costs them 50 cents to, uh, to, to, to provide that service, whether it's a, a gaming service, whether it's some uh, uh, fintech services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very profitable business here. Um, scroll down a little bit further down our um, income statement, uh, and we've got the cost of running the business. Um, so these are the main costs of running the business down here. Um, uh, other interesting one is this one here, big net gains coming in. This is kind of other gains. Um, so this is a significant number. Uh, and because it's a significant number, we ought to go and have a look at it. So let's go and have a quick look at note seven uh, and just see what that is going, going on there. And I'm going to guess that this is some of those investments that you were talking about, Moeed, earlier on. So we're just going to confirm that. Um, by looking at note number seven, uh, you see it kind of coming up here. So here we go, other gains. Uh, uh, and this is, yeah, so this is the net gains on disposals of investee companies. So, um, uh, and other um, fair gains on a, a fair value profit and loss basis. So those gains, just to note, these are realized gains. They've actually kind of banked the cash. These are unrealized gains. And obviously, as we know, and experiencing in the markets, what goes up can go down as well um, so it is possible that they may uh, book some losses having booked some gains um, in the past okay so caveat uh, uh, just a sort of little caveat around that um, so there's a uh, you know and, and that's a significant amount you can you can see those numbers those are those are those are significant drivers they are not immaterial um, still making a you know very nice healthy operating profit so operating margin about 38 40 percent i've got some finance costs not a problem there that's the um, interest they're paying so we're going to find some debt and they are paying tax um still profit for the year 160 uh, billion so 160 uh, billion rmb uh, looking pretty healthy there um i just want to note down here um uh, the uh the earnings per share so you'll notice the earnings per share this has gone from a uh, 98 uh, 0.5 to 16.4 so it's always worth just having a little a little look at that um, uh, just to see the kind of um, the extent to which it's growing so that's a growth of about 71 percent okay so just to uh, note it's nine nine point eight five not 98.5 oh sorry yeah nine nine point eight five sorry that's my reading my decimal places in the wrong place gets new glasses made um so 9.85 up to 16.8 um that is an increase of about 71 percent okay so that's a sort of fairly substantial increase in the profitability of the company uh compared with a top line increase of 28 percent as we uh, ref referenced earlier so that is um, the income statement looking pretty good so far. So let's go and look at the financial strength of the company, sitting, you know, the balance sheet that sits behind it. Um, here is the balance sheet. So we are looking now at the non-current assets. These are the things we need to run the business. Um, quite interesting, and again, reflecting something you were talking about earlier, Moeed. So we see the, um, uh, the property, plant and equipment. This is kind of Typically, what you see in a, you know, in any business, they'll have property, plant, and equipment. But the big numbers are really kind of uh, popping up here. So we have got um, these uh, these investments in. Uh, so we've got some intangible assets that'll be goodwill, for example, in there. Um, they've got investments in associates, um, which is where they own a substantial. Uh, amount of the business so typically around about 40 to 50 percent investments in joint ventures which is where they owe obviously it's a joint venture so 50 percent and then also we've got these uh, financial assets at fair value through uh, profit and loss and financial assets at fair value through comprehensive income now the difference between these two is that um, uh, any gain or loss on this one here uh, is recognized as a profit or loss through the profit and loss account that we were just looking at. So that 
um, uh, that uh, 50 billion, I think it was, uh, uh, again. Um, these are not recognized until we actually sell them. So there's a bit of a distinction there. Um, but what this is telling us that they've got the substantial amount of investments. Now, one of the questions we kind of have is what are these investments for? So um, typically the investments we're looking at up here, so joint ventures, investments and associates, they're going to have, you know, they want to have control over these businesses. They, they're substantial uh, investors. OK, so those are usually quite strategic investments. I want to buy this company or I want to have a control of this company because it's going to distribute my software or help me market or whatever it is. Um, uh, these could be the same thing but they have no control over them they don't exercise control they got a substantially smaller maybe 5 10 15 20 percent shareholdings uh, and therefore these ones they could be just that that's somewhere they're parking surplus cash okay so the question is is that is that effectively for our point of view are we just treating it as a cash figure and they're parking surplus cash or are they ex making strategic investments for uh, for you know particular reason within the business i don't know uh, what the answer to that is um, however if somebody's watching and does know the answer i'd be very interested to hear from you um current assets current assets things that we own that we're trying to turn into cash um uh nothing really kind of jumping out at us um, apart from the fact that um, they do have a lot of cash so these three numbers together are a lot of cash so they've got a lot of cash and it looks to me like uh, they've got so much cash that they're parking some of it up here uh, they're just investing in you know anything they can get that cash out they get it working for them we live in a world of very low interest rates um, uh, and then they've got these accounts receivable uh, which is what you'd expect in some pretty small inventories um, and again because it's an electronic games company um, they're not really going to hold inventories so current assets um current like uh, 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 non-current assets non-current assets very very large but looking to me mainly like those non-current assets, this big uh, trillion number up here, this is mainly driven by um, their investments um, uh, in all of those um, uh, subsidiaries, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that you were mentioning earlier, Moe. Um, come down to the liability side. In fact, we have to just drop down right down to get to the current liability. So these are the amounts that they have to pay soon. Um, uh, so accounts payable, as we'd expect within there, they've got a few other payables in there. A little bit of debt, that's not a problem. Uh, we expect them to have you know, some, some debt they have to pay quite soon, as opposed to debt that's payable further down the line. Um, and also just jumps out at me, this big number here, deferred revenue. Um, uh, just a, as a reminder to what that is, that income they've received, but they haven't yet earned. So uh, if they're selling, say, a year subscription to a platform, um, uh, if you pay up front, um, then they have to recognize that, that um, as a sale over uh, the future period. So they don't owe it back to the supplier. They really owe it to next year and, we'll, and they'll recognize that revenue uh, as revenue in the next year. So this is really good uh, for a cash flow. Any company with lots of deferred revenue tends to have very strong cash flows. So uh, the current liabilities to uh, 270 billion, um, compare that to the 317 billion of current assets, liquidity really is not an issue. And, and as I said, they've just got, they've got cash stuffed um, you know, so in the attic, so to speak, um, as well in the non-current assets. So really, really liquidity is not looking at all um, uh, like a problem for these guys. In fact, too much cash uh, could be the issue for these guys. Now, they do have debt, so they are paying interest. We notice they're paying interest. They do have debt. That's absolutely fine. This is a world of very low interest rates, so they're taking advantage of that. Um, uh, they do have some debt, but the debt is not excessive. Um, uh, it's only 200, uh, uh, you know, 286 billion in total for all of their non-current liabilities. Uh, and that means that they have you know, a very healthy um, uh, 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 total equity line um, uh, for the business. And that total equity line prelim preliminary... Uh, uh, primarily driven by these retained earnings. So you see the retained earnings there um, uh, of about 538 uh, billion. Um, and that is really um, as a result of the fact that they are making substantial profits uh, and not really paying out a huge amount as a dividend. Um, so let's just just check or, or just show where that where we can see that. So um, if we go down to the consolidated, um, this is the uh, the movement in equity. We can see. Uh, I think this is um, uh, this is the current year we're looking at. Um, so uh, there's the profit during the year, um, and uh, down to the comprehensive income. Uh, and then if we scroll a little bit further down, 
Uh, let me just get my scroll figure. Here we go. So if we scroll a little bit further down. Uh, we can see that uh, where we got the um. Uh, yeah, so there's there's the dividend. So there's a little bit of a dividend uh, being paid out there. There's there's our, our dividend. So, you know, a very small amount being paid out as a dividend. Most of it is being reinvested um, back into the business. And again, in the previous year, substantial profit for the year. There's our profit for the year. Um, uh, and uh, again, uh, if we scroll down, we can see um, a, a very small proportion of that is being paid out as a dividend and no share buybacks either. Um, so there's our dividend. So equity funded business, a little bit of debt, um, uh, lots of, um, uh, 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 you know, predominantly funded through retained profits, very, very profitable. Um, those profits all being held in the balance sheet, funding future growth. Um, uh, and the company is kind of, you know, uh, you know, flying, basically. Um, here is their, um, uh, their cash flow. So as we'd expect, very strong cash flow, some operating activities. Um, so just so that we kind of put that into perspective, um, uh, the, 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 the cash flow uh, is um, uh, the, 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 the operating cash flow, 194 billion, um, their EBITDA, 235 billion. So again, you know, pretty similar as we'd expect. Um, uh, and they are making, you know, you know, just generating lots and lots of cash. So really, really strong cash flows for this company. Um, in terms of their investing, we have to be a little bit careful about this because, um, you know, typically what we would do is we would go and look at this this number down the bottom and just look at, you know, what is their investing um, activities, 182 billion. Um, but there's a, a that's a little bit of a distraction, I think. So we need to well, we need to pick this apart. So um, when we look at this, what we see is uh, if I just pull out some some key numbers. So things like kind of you know the purchase of property, plant, and equipment. You know, for for any business that is investment. Um, however, here you can see uh, buying uh, uh, associate companies. Um, they are buying uh, financial assets at fair value. Um, they are buying. Uh, uh, you know, more investments. And, and again, some of these later ones, I think this is just, this isn't really investing, this is parking cash, or it's investing, but it's not investing in the terms of like someone like Coca-Cola would talk about investing in plant and machinery. These guys are just, you know, they've just got cash, um, uh, and they don't know what to do with it. So they're just parking it somewhere. So that kind of um, that, that, that look here, um, of this kind of, you know, this negative 182 or this, you know, this capex of 182, um, I think, you know, most of that is actually related to, you know, just investing spare cash. Um, uh, just as you and I, Moe, you know, if we won the lottery, we might go and, and buy, you know, shares in, in the stock market type of thing. Um, and then finally, the financing activities. Uh, so here um, we see, um, you know, lots of kind of, uh, so all of this bit up here, uh, this is really just you know refinancing going on. So they're borrowing money and repaying repaying money. Um, uh, you can see the dividends are coming down here. There's the dividends um, uh, uh, that, they're, that they're paying out, and, and and that's really you know that's pretty much the kind of you know a little bit of interest they're paying on on the debt, um, uh, and that's really the kind of the story. They're not obviously issuing any shares. They don't need to. There's no reason uh, to go to the shareholders um, to raise money, uh, and we can see that the cash. Has just basically been growing from you know uh, it's a year on year. So uh, there's there's a kind of you can start to see the the, the increase in cash, um, uh, you know, and that's pure cash. But this company has more than just pure cash. It's just got um, so much cash. It's kind of you know falling over um, uh, and therefore investing. So that's kind of the you know that you know it, it's just you know. It, it, it's almost like a money printing machine. This 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 company seems to be. Um, so let, let's just have a quick squiz at the um uh, at the latest set of accounts. If I can just pull them up here, I think I've got them down in front of me. Um, so here is their kind of their their um their, their latest set, and we're just going to look at the balance sheet. Won't have changed that much. Balance sheets don't tend to change, you know, significantly. So we'll just have a quick look at their um uh, the income statement. Um, uh, and here it is. Um, and, and again, you know, just to just to kind of, you know, we can take a real rough guess. So if we take our six months, uh, for example, um, and we say, look, you know, here's the revenue for six months, um, two, seven, three uh, uh, billion. If we double that, we get to five hundred and forty seven billion. Um, 
you know, and, and doubling is, you know, that's just my finger in the air. Uh, and, and if we, they achieve 547 billion top line uh, uh, last year, if you remember, it was 482 billion. That's a 24 percent year on year increase. So, you know, it was 28 percent from 2019 to 2020. You know, I'm forecasting a 24 percent from 2020 to 2021. We're going to know quite soon 2021, a full year is going to come out you know, reasonably soon. Um, and again, you know, the the, the, the gross, um, let me just uh, scroll that up a little bit so we can see the rest of the numbers. Um, so uh, there we go, profit for the period, 92 billion. Um, so if we double that profit for the period, you know, we get up to 184 billion, um, which is a 34% net margin. Uh, that's similar um, uh, to 2020. So they're still operating at a 40% gross margin. Um, so you know, that's nearly 50%. Every time they bill someone, it costs them 50, uh, 50 cents, they get to keep 50 cents. Um, costs of running the business are negligible. Um, again, uh, just to kind of highlight these other gains, going to be quite interesting, you know, since these numbers, markets have gone a little bit, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, maybe that's going to kind of come back. So there's going to be a, uh, maybe a little bit of carnage going on in there. But, you know, it, it's not going to knock this company off, you know, in, in, in spite of, you know, even if uh, some of their investments start to go down in value, um, I I don't think that's good. It's not going to bring this company down. It may it may lessen the value of this company in the eyes of the market, and, and maybe that's a buying uh, you know a buying opportunity. Uh, but fundamentally, this is a you know this is a profitable company. It's generating cash, um, uh, and the margins are looking pretty healthy. So, with all that in mind, um, uh, and as you mentioned, Moe, we don't um, uh, talk about you know giving investment advice because. Um, uh, uh, there's many people out in the world who, who, who can do that much better than us. Um, but we always like to look at the share price and just see what is it telling us uh, about this business and maybe kind of think about, you know, sort of, you know, so there's our historical share price. Uh, obviously, the benefit of hindsight, um, if I sold my house and, and bought shares in Tencent um, back when it floated, um, uh, I would be uh, sitting on my super yacht um, uh, right now. Um, so market cap, 3.7 trillion. You notice this is in Hong Kong dollars. Um, uh, and, and the numbers we were looking at in RMB. So, you know, just to sort of, you know, caveat that, you know, that there's an exchange rate in there. But, you know, even so, um, you know, 15, 16 times earnings. You know what? 16 times earnings, that's long term trading of the um, S&P. That's not unreasonable. That's a, a, a you know, put that into kind of perspective. That's a yield of a about a six percent okay so um it, it looks you know you can see it, it's obviously spiked it's come right down again it's come right off the boil um uh, if i was a chartist um uh, uh then i would be you know one of these ch uh, charting analysts i'd be kind of you know lining up these and sort of looking at where it's going uh, and then what i'm probably trying to do is to line up uh, these and look at where it's going uh, and you might conclude at this point that that becomes a buying opportunity because it's going to kind of kind of come around and go up now um, we have to be careful of that we're you know slightly entering into a new era um, uh, of uh, higher interest rates however this is a cash generating company this is not a jam tomorrow company this is very much a jam today so um, that you know that price to earnings ratio doesn't look like it's it's not a screaming buy but it's not a screaming sell either um dividend yield is very low but we know that because it's actually you know it, it's it's paying out a low dividend there's no reason why they can't start to raise that dividend they are generating the cash they can afford it and if uh you know if there are no opportunities out in the market um then maybe there's a, a, an opportunity for these guys to give the money back alternatively uh, if their strategy is very much to reinvest you could argue that as the markets have been tanking that creates buying opportunities for cash rich companies such as Tencent. So that's kind of um, uh, what we're seeing there um, uh, uh, from the um, uh, from the share price. Um, it, it, it wouldn't appear that it's it's you know it, it I wouldn't avoid it let's put it like that. Um, so there you go, Moeed. I think that's about um, uh, all I can add to the um, uh, add, add, add to that. So you know great company, very profitable. Um, lots of cash, very strong um, cash flow, very strong balance sheet, um, you know, almost too much cash. What is it going to do with it? Uh, is it going to carry on growing? Is it going to go 
you know, to the, you know, keep going to the stars, obviously it's you know, pretty much in the, in the stratosphere already. Um, uh, or is it going to kind of trip over? Uh, and, 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 I, and I don't, you know, I'm not really in the gaming world, so I don't know the sort of the quality of its products. Um, and I don't know the kind of, you know, the, the stickiness or, or the, uh, you know, how, um, you know, whether it's, it's a kind of a fad thing where everyone's playing it today and no one's playing it tomorrow, for example, you know, what they're kind of, um, uh, the, 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 the Boston, uh, the BCG matrix, their kind of cash cows and, and what they've got coming through the pipeline and the way they manage that. But um, it looks to me like it's a well diversified um, company. Yeah, thank you for that, Ted. It's very interesting. So again, love to hear everyone's comments. You know, if you know this business very well, if you know its products very well, do leave your comments in the uh, comments section. We'd love to hear that. This is, a, this is a community at the end of the day. So we're here to inform each other. As always, like, share, subscribe. And don't forget, if there is a company that you would really like us to analyze and you would like to know more about that business for whatever purpose it is that you're considering it, do leave a note in the comment section and do put, put some context behind that, right? So tell us, is this for an interview? Is this for you know a sales conversation you're going to have with them? Or is this for investment purposes? The more context you'll get, the more likely your video will be prioritized in a long list of videos that we have. So until the next video, thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Catch you later, Marie.